Hello everyone, uh, welcome back, TKS Sitch here again, and today we are going to be configuring our sending light guns. So after today's uh, video, we can finally get to a point to where we can actually play all these games. So we're about 95% of the way done with this section of the build that you want to cover running your big box, running your launch box if you're going free, and playing all these MAME games while using the gun to control everything. Okay. Um, anyway, so we have a lot to go over, so I'm not take up any more time. We're going to get this started, so let's go. Thank you. Okay, so before we do anything, um, we're going to need to update some files on our computer. Uh, this should have been... I should have had everyone do this in the first or second video, but we'll go ahead and do it now before we do anything else with our sending. So go to your sending guide, the sendingwiki.org, and on the side toolbar, you want to go down to troubleshooting, right under start here. Go, go under common mistakes, sending troubleshooting. And a lot of details in here, I would suggest go over this in case you have any issues. But go all the way to the bottom. And right here, the uh, line that says if you get unhealed exceptional errors, which I know this was the issue not long ago for a few people. And one of the suggestions is, and we're going to do this, is update the visual C++ and the not debt framework. We won't really need this now for the most part on our build yet, but once we get into um, running Dolphin, getting into a Techno Parrot, you'll need to do this. Techno Parrot actually requires you to update these, so we go ahead and do it now so we don't have to do it later. So we'll start with our Visual C++. All right, you'll we'll come over here to your left Visual CC Redistributables Runtimes. Uh, just hit your download. Uh, select the server best for you. America, so I'll just click this one. Okay, so I'm going to download the zip file here. Open it. Right click it if you're running on a 7 zip and unlock it. Just, just make sure Windows Defender or any virus software programs you have is not going to mess with this. Double click on it and create a folder to extract this. It really doesn't matter where you create it, because we're just going to delete that folder after we're done. All we need is just a spot for this to be pulled into. Alright, take it, drop it into here. Open that folder, and you're going to hit install all that. And this will run every one of them. If you don't have this, if you don't hit the in, all install, you would have to go down individually and click on every one of them. So it just saves a lot of time. All right, once you're done with that, close your window, close this, go back to your guide, and now we'll do the same thing with Net Framework. All right, so click this on your .NET 7.0. Ah. X on that. Alright, same thing. Open this up. You can actually just install it from here, so we are. If you have any windows up, it'll probably hide behind your window, so just minimize any window that might be in front of this. Alright, and you are done. Close. Now you can just delete this folder. You don't need it. Actually, Probably a better idea is take this folder and move it into your launch box. So that way, if you're going to a, another computer with your build, then you have these folders already in hand. So if you do need to update this on the other computer that you plan on being, then you can just pull this out from our tools folder and just do the installation there. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. Another reason why we have this tools folder 
and everything we need is going to stay within this build. So we're just going to take this, drag it, and just rename it to something you know what it is. I'm just going to name it C++. All right, and if you need to put this onto any other computers, you may put this install on. It's all right here for you. And at this point, you can just hit install all, and that's all you have to do. You don't need to move it or anything. All right, go ahead and close that window out. Okay, now let's go ahead and get our guns going. Close this window out. Open up your LaunchBox folder. And we're going to start our send-in program. Uh, we're going to do this one gun at a time. Okay, so you're going to go down to your tools folder. Go into the software we have set up for player one, which should be uh, P1. Send-in light gun Windows software. <clears throat> send-in light guns Windows software, V08. Send-in light gun. And find your uh, EXE here. Now, before we uh, click this, uh, a couple of things you need to do first, or a few things you probably need to do. Um, first, make sure you have both your guns connected. Um, ideally, you'll want to use USB port 3.0. My cats are being dicks. But USB 3.0, you want to have one in the front, one in the back. Now, I don't know if you still need to do that if you do have USB 3.0. I think they stated you no longer need to do that. But if you don't have two USB 3.0 ports on your computer on the front, then you'll want to do one in the front and one in the back. Because uh, this gun here is set on a 2.0, so this one I had to move to the back. But this one's on a 3.0, and I can do this on the front. Don't use hubs if you don't have to, but if you do have to use a hub, it needs to be a powered hub. Uh, some people have had success with those, some haven't, so it's really just an individual needs base. I th the uh, problem of why that happens is, I think it comes down to recoil guns. So if you're a recoil gun user and it doesn't work, those just use a lot more power. So there's only so much power those ports can push out. That's why a 3.0 is recommended, is because it pushes out way more power than a 2.0 will. Uh, also, if you do have to use that hub, make sure it is plugged into a 3.0. You'll just get more power out of that, along with it being powered as well. Um, also, you want to make sure you have your environment set to where you actually want to play. Uh, me, for example, I'm in my living room, and my arcade is in the back area. So I have windows. As you can see, I have a bright patio door right next to my machine. Um, when I have the gun cameras, I'll show you the rest of it. But I have my ceiling lights on, I have my kitchen light on, and I have more windows over here that's open. So I want to have my gun set to that because I want my light conditions to be probably the worst they can be and if I can get them set perfectly in those conditions then I should never have any problems so let's go to the light gun now start that all right give it a second to pull up okay so first decide which gun is going to be your player one for me it's going to be the black one Okay, hit black right here. Your next step, you're going to hit select light gun. Once you do that, it'll populate here. Let's see, yeah. Just so you can see there. Now, once that comes up here, you're going to want get info for your light gun. Oh, make sure you don't have this running. Um, if you haven't done this yet, it shouldn't be running. But if it is, hit stop. Okay, 
Um, the thing to remember on this is, first of all, your firmware version. We're going to update that because it may say 1.5, 1.6. And even if yours does say 1.8, I'd still just update it anyways. I I'm going to. It doesn't hurt anything. And you're a camera. So camera H. Remember whatever your camera is and mine is H on this gun. I want to update my firmware. Just hit OK. And let's send and do its thing. Alright, a quick note. I had to redo this section myself. So, make sure after you update your C++ and your net that you restart your computer. Um, I got a handle error before um but after i restarted it everything's fine now so just a quick note on that if you had any problems okay so anyways we're good we're updated uh hit save all right next we're going to go to border on your border this should automatically be click unclick it you don't want that click save settings Go to your cursor offset. Here, you're just going to set the size of your TV. Um, this is going to be your corner to corner. So mine's a 24 inch. And you know, corner to corner. Up here, down here, how long is it? 24, 32, 48, whatever. This number is going to automatically populate, so don't worry about it. Once you're good, hit save settings. And we'll go to button assignment. Now, for your button assignment, I would recommend pulling up your Sendin Wiki, the uh, visual setup guide. Um, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you're going to match. You're going to match up with the settings they have here. So, where are they at? Right here. So, we're going to do our normal first. Trigger is going to be mouse left. Pump action is going to be your mouse right. Your front left is going to be your mouse middle. Rear left is going to be space. Front right, that's going to be uh, one. Now one is going to be the start button for MAME. So that's going to be this one right here. So how this would work, because we're going to have five over here as your off screen. So if I'm playing a game, I want to put quarters in, I want to shoot off screen, and that'll be five putting quarters in. And then whenever I'm ready to play it, once I point on screen, it'll be recognized as one, which MAME reads as start. So that's why I have that there. Um, this should already be set, border on off, leave that there. That's going to be your border button. Okay. Scroll this over, and this is going to set up our off screen. Okay, so on your off screen here, oh, you don't need to scroll that. For me, it's just easier to keep track of. Actually, I do need this pulled out. All right, so your trigger is going to be up mouse to right. That's going to cause your trigger to reload. Uh, pump action, mouse right. We always want our pump action to reload. Your front left, your front left mouse middle is going to be your third action button. Very few games require a third action button, but for those that do, we have that set. Escape. Now escape is going to let you exit your games so right here is going to be this button here and you're just going to point off screen hit this and that's going to get you out of your main game so you don't need to use a keyboard or anything else you can just do that by your gun five I already explained what five is rear right is going to be your border so whether you're on screen or off screen you control mainly control the border but with mame you really don't need to since we already have our borders pre-baked into the system all right hit your save settings if you don't you got to do all that again 
All right, now we are going to the most important screen of your entire sentence setup. You want to go into your configuration. Okay, so as I said, this is going to be the most important screen of your whole setup. This here is going to determine whether you love your guns and they're accurate versus you be one of those commenters saying how much your guns suck and it's Sendon's fault. It all comes down to this screen right here. And I'll show you. Oh. Uh, make sure we get our settings done here first. Uh, so we'll just go through them all. You want this check, this check. If this is checked, leave that unchecked. All check camera, leave that checked. Uh, choose your camera, and I only have two, and I remember that for this gun, it's H. So I'm going to make sure that is set to H. Um, down here, I think that will be on by default. Unclick it. You don't want C mold enable. You don't want that checked. Leave that on for now. That's going to um, enable us to calibrate our guns later on. Check that. It'll auto save our calibration. And I check the top one and the bottom one there. I leave this one unchecked. And anti jitter, if that's on, uncheck it. Once you do that, save your settings. And now we'll get to the actual gun part. So come up here and start your program. All right, get your gun and pull it out. Okay, so to your left screen here, this is what your gun naturally sees. And I will show you my setup in that screen right here. So I have this bright window. I've got that window, and I've got that window there. I have living room light, my back den light. So, I'm not playing in a dungeon. It looks like it from here, but I'm not. It's, it's pretty pretty bright. Um, when you're doing your setup, you want to make sure that you're, you do not have a window like behind your arcade you don't want a window literally like right next to it on either end and also you don't want any led strips going around your arcade the reason being these lights are fine because they're not shining directly at the lens but they're fine hitting it from around so that's why it's fine. So make sure you don't have direct light hitting it. I mean, that's all it comes down to. So you don't need to be in a dungeon. You don't need to be in a basement. So I wanted to make sure that's covered so you don't turn into one of those people. Okay, so our next step now is we're going to need to make sure your process image is good. Now, this screen, this is really the most important screen of this entire setup. If this is not right, then nothing's going to work. Nothing's going to be accurate. So we got to make sure this is right. It looks fine right now. I don't even have my border on. So let's turn the border on. I'm just going to hit Alt-V, or you can use the border on the gun. All right, so there's a few things that I want to do. Um, uh, first, right here on the left-hand side, and you see how my mouse is being all jittery? Now, I purposely set a couple of things wrong here, and I want to show you how to fix that in your case. So with this right here, um, contrast, brightness, exposure, zoom, that is how Sinden in the guide has it naturally. But for me, these settings don't work. For you, it may, but this would be a good base to start from. Um, now, what I found that works for me is to change my exposure. So I'll start my exposure. That is too low. So I want to start with a negative 7. 
let's come down here. I want to change that to seven, negative seven. Anytime I could change, you'll want to hit your set. So that will set the change. And now I'll look again and boom. And if you notice, my raw screen is a little bit brighter too. Uh, what you want is, see that white border in the raw? You want that to come out white. If it's dark, if it's a little uh, gray, you'll need to make a change here. And start with your exposure. Um, you really shouldn't let it get below 5. I think below 5 is pretty extreme. But let me try it at 5 and see how it works on my system. All right, and negative five is good, but I think it's just too much for, for my system. It causes a lot of glare, but it definitely gets, gets this white really coming through, but just amplifies everything else. So just mess with your range on your exposure from negative five to negative nine. For me, negative seven works perfect. Set that. All right, so that looks good to me. Um, also, on your contrast and your brightness, if this still don't work for you or doesn't look right, um, you can adjust these. Um, for contrast, a good range is between 50 to 80. Brightness, I want to say 90 to 120. Um, but the first thing you should mess with before uh, any of this is your uh, screen brightness. And I'm talking about like your physical screen, not this right here, but your physical screen brightness. Uh, also, if you're playing on a 4K TV, or really just any TV at all, you'll want to make sure it's not in economy mode or power saving mode. You want that thing running full power as it can get because that does affect the screen's brightness. So especially if you're playing on a big TV and this border's just not coming up, that's more likely the issue. Um, okay, now next, the reason I say this screen right here on your right's the most important is this is what Sendin sees. You wanna make sure all of this is blue no matter where you're at. So I'm, I'm about a length and a half away from the monitor, it's recommended to be two lengths away. So as far as your as far as your setup goes, you'll probably want to stay within that range. Um, if I move up here to the corner, I'm good. You want to make sure all this is blue inside those white lines. So I call this the corner to corner test good here, I'm good here, I'm good there, and I'm good there. And if you can do that, if you can do that and keep that screen blue, then as far as the Sended program itself goes, you have no issues. And if you're losing your aim, you're not aligned, that's either going to be a ROM issue or a emulator issue. So something's wrong in one of those two setups but it narrows down the troubleshooting. So if you come back and look at sending and you're on this screen here, then you know it's not a sending issue. Everything as far as sending goes is accurate. Blue screen, you're good. Your problem is somewhere else. And that definitely does make life easy. Okay, now that I got that out of the way, and sorry for the long essay on that, it's just something I really wanted to stress out. But you're golden here. So from here, you'll want to uh, save your settings again. Come right here and burn to light gun. Hit OK. Now we can align. So go to your alignment. And I want to reset this to zero. Alright, so on your alignment, when you're aiming this, all you do 
is you want to get that point of your arrow just right in the middle of your crosshairs. You want it to be pointing at the tip. So you're going to hold this left button down for about five to seven seconds. It says three seconds, but for me, it seems five to seven is more where it's always at. All right, that looks perfect to me. But let's say it doesn't look perfect on your end. It's just not lining up. Well, you can just go ahead and reline again. Hold your D left, center up. And now you're happy. And if you're still not happy, then you can just keep on repeating until you are. So I want to save my alignment changes. All right, save alignment changes, and you know, that's it. That's all there is for the gun setup. So we're going to uh, close our border and stop and close this program. And just do the same thing on your gun too with a, a couple of changes. Oh, first going back, um, the changes you made with your exposure, your contrast and your settings, you'll want to uh, write those down and put those on the same gun. It just makes life a little bit easier. Or at least it makes it a good starting point. That may not work perfect all the time with your second gun. But now that you know how to do this, then setting up your second gun is going to be a whole lot quicker. Okay, give it a second to pop up. Click on it. If it's running, stop it. Make sure that box is checked. Select your gun. Okay, so now you want to click red. Turn that out. I want red to be my second gun. Select light gun. And if you have two guns that are the same color, two red, two black, uh, check the COM number. So if your gun in the uh, first setup black is a COM4, and then this one, your second one, reads as a COM6. Just uh, take a note and write that down so you're not resetting the same gun twice. Uh, again, get your light gun info. And this is going to be camera G. So remember that your gun's going to be whatever camera says. For me, it's G. Now, down here, um, I'm going to leave it as default, but if you're running, again, if you're running guns of the same color, I would change the gun 2 to player 2. Actually, I'll go ahead and do that now. So, I'll make this a player 2 gun, so when it reads up here, it's going to say player 2. Okay, update and wait. Okay, and once we're completed, we're just going to do the same thing. Oh, be sure to save. Alright, we're saved. I hit about two or three times just to be sure it's saved. Border. That'll be checked. That's checked. Uncheck it. Um, cursor offset. You'll want to set it to size your TV 24. Save your settings. A button assignment. Now we're going to basically be running the same setup, but we're going to make a couple of changes. All right, so again, you can just follow this button guide here, or you can just do what I'm going to do. So again, triggers mouse left, pump actions mouse right, your front left is going to be your mouse middle. Um, now, this will be a change. So, rear left, I want to make this Q because MAME naturally has this one at Q. 
And for player one, this would have been your space bar. So you can't have the gun sharing the same keyboard buttons. They could share the same mouse because of something called raw input. So they can have the same mouse controls, but they cannot be sharing the same keyboard inputs. And I think this is one of the things that really makes setting two players up hard for this gun because that part just really wasn't clarified. Okay, continuing, mouse right, you want this to number two and not one. Number two on MAME is going to be your start button for player two. Uh, rear right, it's your border naturally, but I have it set to none because I do not want player two to control the border and all this will be fine. Oh, and side note, if you're running a pedal, um, just set this number to the to mouse right because it'll have the same actions as your pump action. So you can just set that to mouse right and your pedal should work off the bat for you. Uh, if you're going off screen, you want that mouse right. You want your trigger to reload if you're shooting off screen. Pump action, of course, going to be mouse right reload. Mouse middle, Q. Naturally, this would be escape for player one, but we don't want player two to end the game. And player two is probably someone who's not experienced with this, so you don't want them hitting random buttons and exiting out your game. So I'm just going to match this one with the on screen Q, which is going to be the third action button if there is one. I think mouse middle is the same thing. Um, six is going to be your start for player two, so make that six. Uh, rear right again. I don't want player two activating the border. Leave that at none. And these will be fine. Once you're done with that, hit save settings. Hit OK. And go to our configuration. All right. And here I already gave you the lecture of what's important, what to do, what not to do. So all we're going to do is make our changes down here. If you had to make any changes, now's the time to do it. For me, um, negative seven worked best for me, so I'm just going to set that and save it. Everything else looks good. Uh, make sure that your checks match where mine are at. Should be the exact same as you were earlier. Okay, save your settings. Start your gun. Okay, so before we continue any further, uh, I should have also mentioned this. Sorry, there's a lot I'm forgetting today. Um, if you uh, did change the name of your gun down here on Identity after you selected your firmware, you'll need to come back to this screen and uh, reselect your gun. And make sure it changes here. Once you do that, then save it. Uh, if not, you may have gotten a message once you try to start this that would say uh, sending guns disconnected, etc., etc. That's the reasoning. So just close the program, reopen it. It'll probably pop that error up again, but to fix it, you'll just clear this off, select your player 2 gun, and select gun, and that'll solve that problem. Alright, uh, save, and then... Now we'll finish configuring this gun. All right, so you got your settings good. You got your check marks is all where they need to be. Uh, make sure you're saved. And I already gave you the lecture of why this screen's important and about lighting, so I'm not going to do that again. Get your gun. For me, it's the red one. Get your screen up. Alt B. Point or blue. Corner to corner test. Good. Good. Not good. Okay, I was just too close to the TV or to my monitor. Um, also, I would suggest taking like a step left and step right. If you're playing player two, you're going to be out wider. So I'm going to take another step out. Everything looks good still. Now I want to go this way. 
about the furthest I would ideally be if I'm playing. And everything's good. As long as your blue mark is good, then you got your gun set up. So now we're going to save these settings, go to your alignment. And remember, hold left. Once your mouse centers, aim and shoot. Everything looks good there to me. If it doesn't to you, let's go ahead and realign again. It's there. Might be too close to TV. My monitor, I mean. All right, perfect. Save alignment changes. And we're good. These guns, as far as saying programs concerned now, are perfect in these horrible light conditions. So if I'm playing, if it happens to be a darker in the day, I got these lights off, then the guns are even going to be more accurate if that's even possible. All right, now let's go ahead and, oh, go back to your configuration. We're all good here, so we're going to burn to light gun. Uh, hit OK. Now stop your program. Actually, turn your border off first. Now stop it. Okay, next step. We're going to make the programs turn on automatically. So that way you don't have to always go through all your folders, just activate that program. It's really easy, really simple. Let's get that done. Because I'm tired of having to dig through these files myself as well. Now, what this will allow LaunchBox to do is anytime you open up the LaunchBox program or Big Box, anytime you open up LaunchBox or Big Box, it will automatically start up both your sending programs. Now, it won't turn them off, but honestly, I can live with that. And down the road, I'll have the script or auto hotkey out or something that will automatically turn them off and turn them, turn them on and turn them back off per game. I already have it done that way. Actually, I just need to get it more refined. But once I get it refined, I'll put a video out on that. All right, so we are going to go to tools. Options, Startup Applications, Add Application. All right, so it's already here for me, but I want to pretend it didn't. So if you want to find your light gun executable, we'll start with player one first. So launch box LG, tools. All right, so you want player one. You should know how to do this by now. <laughs> and actually, it's probably the last time you ever had to do this. Hit open. All right, that's it. And you can pull this out. You can see that affects player one. Doo -doo. Yeah, player one. Um, you're going to want to leave these at both. Leave that unchecked. If you do check it, i done that the first time I did this. It's going to populate send in software every time you open up a game. So just leave it unchecked. You don't need it. Add application. We're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to do it with player two. All right. So player two. Light gun open. OK. All right, and that's it. And as a proof that it works, I want to close this out. Close this out. All right, I don't have any programs going down here. And we're going to start our light gun. Or we're going to start our launch box. 
All right, now it'll take a couple of seconds for it to populate. And you'll see it populating down here once LaunchBox comes up. All right, so you have that up. We have one, and we got two. And there we go, confirm it's working. It's already start. That's good, that's already start. And those actually just got moved out here to the small toolbar. And that's how you automatically have that going. Um, I would recommend to go ahead and restart your computer just to make sure everything is running fairly good, get everything settled down in your system. And this next step, we're going to configure your guns to MAME. And I'll also show you how to access MAME through LaunchBox here. It's real simple. Okay, just go to any game title. It doesn't matter. Beastbusters, why not? And we're going to set our MAME input assignments. Come down here to open MAME 259LG. Right click. And we have MAME open. Come to your general settings. Now, if you haven't yet, or if you did from a previous video, I told you to set your video mode to uh, GDI. Uh, the reason we want GDI is because it's the only one, well, it will allow us to uh, pull up the border. Um, BGFX is the one I like to use, but if you're running a older model computer, like a old Optiplex and you don't have a graphics card, BGFX might not work for you. Um, but OpenGL is good. The problem running OpenGL right now is you can't pull up your border. So we do need our border right now so we can get our buttons assigned. But after we get our buttons assigned, then we'll switch over to OpenGL or we could also use BGFX. Um, I'm going to use OpenGL just because just I know that should work for everybody. Uh, later on in a later video, I'll get into why I like BGFX better and some of the cool things you can do with it. I just don't want to overload y'all right now with too much information. Anyway, return to previous menu. Save your settings. All right, open your border. Now, MAME it will probably close or minimize, and that's fine if it does. Uh, just come down here. Maximize it again, pull your border back up, and you're good. Go up to uh, input assignments, and we're going to go down to player one controls. We got our gun here, we got our assignment, and one way to make sure you're good and your aim is good is Look at your mouse as it's going on the screen. As I can tell, it is perfectly aligned with the gun. So I know as far as send in program goes, that's working well. And my control is working well in these shitty light conditions. All right. So here, um, it's going to look like this. Uh, the reason these are already changed is I tried to shoot this video yesterday, but that video turned out shitty. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm making a new one today. Anyways, make sure your gun's already pointed at the screen. Now hit your delete to clear any inputs at that point. Hit enter, pull your trigger. You got gun button one. And your gun number will probably be different from mine, so the gun number doesn't matter. Okay, same thing here. Delete. Uh, for this, I just leave the gun pointing at the floor. Hit enter. Do that. The reason I do that is it's the recoil button, but a lot of times whenever I do the recoil, it'll move the gun. So button two might read button two and also x axis y axis so it's just much easier to set it this way reload will still work with the pump action um p3 is already set 
actually it's not we want we want this to use our um, middle button so I'm just going to delete that leave it on screen and you're going to hit this right here for your middle button that's what your middle button should be hit enter all right it should read gun button number three all right, so now when you're playing your games, of course, you have your reload, reload, trigger, and if it calls for it, your third button. Move all the way up. And you're going to go up to your AD stick. AD stick games are Aliens 3, Terminator, Revolutionary X. Uh, those games require the crosshair, so there's no getting around it. And that's just because... The light guns on there are basically disguised joysticks. There's huge joysticks. So anyways, we'll delete our input. Hit enter, and this is going to be left or right. Alright, and if, if it comes up gun X, Y, or x minus x plus you don't want that it needs to be just straight x so let's pretend i messed up i'm just going to delete it and i'm going to do it again oh and use your keyboard when you're setting these up that's what i'm using right now is my bluetooth keyboard uh don't tell send i'm using bluetooth they say don't use bluetooth Delete that, we're going to go up and down here. Alright, now go to your light gun X analog, same thing. Delete your input, hit enter, go left or right. Now if you're having problems with this and you're getting multiple inputs at a time, you might be too close to your screen, so just kind of take a step back. Um, yesterday when I was doing this, I had that issue, and I was just too close to the screen, so I just took a step back, and everything was fine. Okay, and last, we'll do your mouse. I'm going to delete, enter, left or right, Y analog, delete, enter, up and down. Okay, and that is it for that. Come down to player two, and we're just going to do the exact same with the red gun. Point first, make sure your aim is lined up with that arrow floating around. I look good, and so does the gun. All right, so it's going to be your trigger button. Delete. Enter, pull the trigger, make sure you're pointing on screen. <laughs> Delete, enter, point off screen, pull the trigger. Delete, enter, this is going to be on screen, front left button. Alright, now just scroll all the way up. AD uh, stick to analog. Alright, delete, enter, left or right. Okay, now that's what I'm talking about earlier. I have the um, X minus. I don't want the X minus. I don't want X plus. I just want X. Alright, X, Y, 2. Enter, up and down. Alright, same for here. Delete. Enter, left or right. Enter, delete. Oops. I mean, delete, then enter. If you mess up, hit escape. Now, delete. Enter, up, down. On your mouse, delete, enter, left or right. Delete, enter, up and down. All right, that's it.
Oh, uh, man, that should be all our controls we need to do. Go to other controls. We already have uh, one for player one start. Player two's already set with the number two button. We have our coins right here already set. Now, very, very important, don't forget this, save your settings. If you don't, guess what? You get to do that all over again. All right, go ahead and close this border up. All B. And let's uh, test some games out. All right, um, I want to test out Area 51 first, Maximum Force. Uh, this is just an easy game to test out, and it's pretty accurate. So it's a good way to test both your accuracy and in-game. Uh, this one doesn't require a um, in-game calibration. I will do one of those next for you to show you. Uh, so let's make sure our buttons work. These are going to be our coins. That works. Point on screen. Hit start. Um, go beginning. This is one of my favorite games. I enjoy it. Um, yeah, if you play this game, play the split version. The uh, this the uh, Area 51 by itself. It seems for me that one always runs sluggish, and it has some sound issues. But doing good. Now it's player two. Aim is very superb right now. Oh, and also, once you start playing with two guns by yourself, <laughs> you never want to play any other way. Two guns is the way to go. Alright, now we're going to escape out of the game. Just hit that. Um, next, we're going to play Karn Evil. That game does require in-game calibration because your second gun's not going to work at all. And when you get to the uh, gameplay selection, like your uh, level select, I don't think that'll even work either. So I'll show you how to fix and change that. Okay, so you're going to want to hit F2. F2 will get you to your uh, test menu. You want to want to use your volume buttons, which will be the minus and plus sign. Once it gets past this. Now you have all these other things you could mess around and play with, so feel free. Uh, all we're worried about right now is gun calibration. Get on that, hit your F2 again. Now, take your first gun for player one and hit that arrow. Now, the thing on this, it's going to recognize you hit that arrow whether you do or not, the X I mean. So even after this, and if your aim is still off, just come back and recalibrate again. Uh, sometimes I had to do it twice. So, I just want to click that. We're good. That we're good. And now here you can uh, test that. Um, to me, everything looks fine. I'm right on. But let's say you need to redo it again. So, you're just going to hit your start button, which is going to be on screen, front right. And you can recalibrate it again. Oh yeah, this one's even better. So if you're happy, hit your trigger, and it's going to jump to your second gun. Now, if you're just playing with a one gun, you'll um just use your trigger button 
on your keyboard and just bypass all this. And then that way you can play Carnival with one player. But if you're watching this, I want to assume you have two guns, so take your second gun and do the same thing. All right, everything looks good here. Let's see, I need to recalibrate it. Same thing, front right. All right, that one's even better. Accept it. Volume up all the way down to your exit. Hit your F2. It'll take a moment to get back to the game. All right, so this point click, that one's good. Let's get player two in on some of this action. All right. Now this stage is fun, but if you really want a good fun stage right off the bat, go to um, Rickety Town. Rickety Town where it's at. All right, let's get out of that. All right, and the last one I'll go over with you is a big buck hunter. Now you have to do this for every uh, buck hunter game. Why? I, I don't know. I will go with the original one. I will go with Call of the Wild. Now there's two things you'll have to do with buck hunter. One is you're going to have to get your gun aligned. Secondly, you have to set the reload. The reload doesn't automatically get changed when you do your general input. So you just have to come here manually and do it, which isn't hard. Because as far as Big Buck Hunter goes, it sees it as button 3, but it needs to be button 2. You know, it's a one-player game, so all we'll do is we'll delete that input, hit enter, shoot the floor. Now our pump button's where it needs to be. Let's go ahead and escape out. Next, we got to set our alignment, and we're going to do that the same way. We're going to F2 into it. We're going to come up to gun calibration. Hit your start. And you're going to hit the dots. Just be very careful. Take your time. Make sure you hit them dots. All right, you'll hit that F2 to accept your value. It'll give you the next dot, and you'll just repeat this. Two again. F2. 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 
F2. We're going up here. F2. All right, F2. 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 All right, and that is it. Now here you could test your calibration. It's going to jump around quite a bit on this game. That's just how this game is. But as long as it comes back in the center, then you're good. And I'm actually going to recalibrate my gun again. I'm just going to use the magic of editing to bypass that and get right back to the screen and show you if there's any difference. All right, but you want to F2 to recalibrate. All right, so this is just how it's going to look. As long as you have that dot returning back to the center, you just want to jump around. And that's just the nature of this game. For some games, that's just how it is. It's got to remember, it is an arcade, and it just wants your quarters. All right, but well, we're good. So I hit my start button. Come down to exit. Uh, start. Let's see if I can at least pop a deer. A real good way to test your aim is really right now. It's going to show you where you shoot. So I want to go trip. I shot right in the center and it recognized it. So even though that bullseye was showing your shot all over the place, I'm still shooting uh, fairly accurate. Remember, this game, it requires your pump, so between every shot, always make sure that you're pumping. That's how the original arcade game was. Yeah, that was point on where I was aiming. All right, so you see I got three right there. <laughs> so that's how you uh, get your gun aligned for Big Buck Hunter. And I believe you have to do that for every one of them. Um, anyways, um, that is it. That's all I got for you for now. So I just want to give you all some time to digest that. In the uh, next video, I want to jump into... 
big box and launch box UI control. So even if you're playing free, I do recommend though getting a premium launch box build. But even then, if you're doing it for free, we're going to control everything through these guns. And I'll go with over with y'all that next time. And it actually won't take too long. Uh, anyways, thanks for sticking around. I hope everything's running great for you. Uh, like, subscribe. You know the routine. I will check you on the next one. Later.